Well, we specialize in flowers, decor, and styling for weddings and corporate functions, um, where we help the bride or the client um, conceptualize the idea and then take it through to execution. So that's why our slogan is from concept to conclusion. But we are trying to move more into the corporate um, functions um, as well as international functions because weddings are very seasonal. So to keep the business afloat and sustainable, we need to diversify our services. Well, for us, um, unfortunately, the RAND, the weakening RAND is an opportunity because that attracts quite a bit of international clients, um, which can be your bride or your corporate, because when they spend their money here, they get quite a lot of value for money. Um, another opportunity is all the venues popping up everywhere. We've got quite a few new venues popping up every year, um, which poses as a nice opportunity to try and get in there and become a preferred supplier for them. And then another opportunity for my business specifically, we are now, we started a subsidiary company, which is a black female owned company um, with a level two BE status. So for us, that is nice because we can now get into the South African corporate market because they're very finicky about mm -hmm. having the right status and BEE levels before they start working with you. Um, we do have a quite a bit of challenges. One of the challenges that we face at the moment um, are uneducated clients. Um, people think uh, stuff are free, like when we do weddings, which is basically greenery everywhere I think they have this picture in their mind that we go get it from the trees or we steal it from the neighbors and they don't understand why we charge so much for it so uneducated clients is definitely something that I'm working on and that's why I do consultations at my studio so that I can inform my clients of what goes into it where we get all our stuff from um, the type of work that goes into it so a big part of what I do in my consultation is educate my client. Um, another threat that I find is that brides think that it's quite an easy way to make money. So a lot of brides would, after their wedding and after organizing their own wedding, start their own little planning business or styling business mm -hmm. and because they don't know the complexity of what goes into a business and keeping it sustainable, they undercharge and in essence, they undercut what we supposed to charge. So that makes it a little bit difficult, but they don't always last that long. It's just, you only have a bride once. So yeah. they come in and they take those brides away from you and then afterwards they come back to you and they said oh they should have made use of a professional so it's and then good. it's too late so unfortunately yeah. that happens as well yeah. I don't know if there is an actual benchmark because everybody is they just charging what they feel um, we've had, I've had quite a few workshops that I've done where I've chatted to people in my specific industry where it's um, to do with flowers and event planning. And you can't really compare prices because one person will charge 35,000 Rand and another person will charge 15,000 Rand and they do exactly the same thing. Yeah. So we don't, we don't have something where we can go, what is a salary for an accountant supposed to be worth two years experience? And then you can find that on Google. If you try and do that with event planning or florists or stuff like that, then you don't find that. Um, I'm also on quite a few Facebook groups, um, florist groups, 
and they are quite jacked up overseas where they charge three times markup and then they charge labor per hour for a specific rate and stuff like that. And my peers don't do the same. Everybody just jumped into the industry and mm -hmm. they're trying to get their businesses to work. So, and people are not very open to share, share kind of what they do and how they do it. The so if you would ask someone like, how do you price? They won't give you a full honest answer. Yeah, that's true. And in, in many industries, actually, um, something that we've come across is that uh, the quality benchmarking, and it's one of the reasons why um, reviews on platforms are so important. Um, the quality benchmarking across the world is something that has been a, a little bit of a, a lack. Um, it's you, you're more than welcome to charge, you know, fifty thousand dollars for planning a wedding, but uh, then you need to deliver on on the product and the service. Exactly. Um, um, for us personally, it's just made doing your marketing. Now you need to spend quite a lot more time on social media platforms um, because you need to constantly engage with the people out there and your potential clients. Yeah. And you can't just post something today and then six months down the line post something else. You need to constantly update and stay with the trends and show them what you're doing and kind of build trust with your clients by showcasing what you've done, um, kind of engaging them in the process. So for us, we try and it's it's very difficult because we don't always, I don't all, always understand all the technical stuff that goes into yeah. this. I just want to do my creative job and actually pass all of this on to someone that exactly. has a better understanding. Yeah. But we have to learn and we have to stay with the times and know what the best way is of using Facebook marketing and Instagram and Twitter. And there are so many platforms that I don't even understand and I don't even yeah. use, which I actually should because the younger generation grows up and they get married and that is my client. Or they go yeah. into a corporate job and they need events, so that is my client. We don't have a strategy at the moment, but um, like I mentioned before, we have now started the subsidiary company, which is black female owned. And our black partner is actually, um, she does marketing for a big company. So that's going, she's going to be taking on that side of the business. We're actually sitting together um, at the end of the week to, to chat about that because it is quite important to have a plan true but i must say we haven't worked with the plan yeah. we just do what we do and post yeah. photos and hope people yeah. see us and maybe do a little bit of an ad here or a competition exactly. there but not really like a concrete plan that we follow yeah. and it is quite intimidating like you said the complexities and the fact that it changes on a regular basis you know google updates their algorithm yeah. facebook changes you yeah. know your organic reach and your paid reach. Um, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to confuse you even further, but it changes even for me. <laughs> I've, I've been working in this industry for for quite a few years, and um, I'm, I come from a more from a content uh, perspective to to this game. But I do have a um, sort of a medium level coding insight, uh, and I have to refresh my insights every now and again to make sure that I know exactly what's cooking. Um, I, I think what, I think it's important to establish exactly why we are, um, as, as business owners, why we're participating in, in digital strategies and activities. Um, would you agree that it's mostly to increase your digital exposure so that you can get that traffic through your door? Yeah, we have to. There are so many businesses that we are competing with that if we don't put in the effort to try and attract the client and to try and make our service most attractive, then we're going to lose out and we're going to have to close our doors. So we have to, unfortunately, we have to play the game 
And if you're a business owner of a small company um, like mine, we don't employ many people. Um, and I have to do the finances and I have to be the creative director and the marketing director and all of that. So I have to be part of this process if I want to or not, because until we are big enough to outsource that, it's in my hands to make sure that it actually works. People would be reluctant to trust you because I'm the same. I don't just yeah. trust anybody. There's so many scams out there. Absolutely. Um, and with this whole thing of fake it till you make it, anybody can put up this whole show of I'm this brilliant person and they can steal yeah. photos from the internet. But if you don't have like actual people that's worked with that person to verify the story, then it's, it's difficult mm -hmm. to put trust in them. I would be willing to um, chat to potential brides if, if they need references. So, because as you say, writing a fake reference is quite easy. Um, but if you can tell people that you, you are more than willing to, or you're more than welcome to phone these people, I've worked with them before, you can chat to them about their experience or the service that they've received. So actually playing open cards with people. Um, for yeah. me, I like meeting people face to face. Um, that's still, that's what I prefer doing. So um, either doing a Skype call with them or inviting them to my studio for a consultation so that they can actually get to meet and get to know the person that they'll be spending a lot of money on. Um, for yeah. me, it's quite important to have that, that personal relationship with my client. Well, as you say, um, exposure to the global market would be great um, because of the opportunity with our RAN that's so weak, we can attract quite a lot of um, international clients to South Africa, which would be good for our travels and our ec economy and all of that as well. So if we can get into the global market and, the, and get onto a global platform, um, that would be fantastic. Um, and also if you would be able to kind of give that that factor of trust to the clients. So kind of like you've done your due diligence on your side to make sure that this client is not a scam or someone that's not going to rip you off. If they know that you are a trustworthy platform to make use of, they will know that the people that's on your platform are trustworthy as well. So hopefully it will help with brand recognition, which would get us out there because I think constant brand recognition also helps with the trust factor. Um, so it's just all about exposure and getting to a, the right target audience mm -hmm. because we can put ourselves on a radio and put ourselves on TV and all of that, but that's not necessarily going to um, expose us to that exact target audience. And it's going to cost you an arm and a leg.